Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. Today I'm going to be filming my June wrap up. It's been a really great reading month. I did a readathon, um, the uh, Summertime Reads readathon hosted by Completely Melanie and Reads Readers, and I loved that, so that will come towards the end of this video. But I actually managed to read 13 books in the month of June, which is probably the most I've read in a really long time because I sort of fell out of my reading a little bit. Last month I think I read nine books, which was getting back up there, but 13 is amazing and I could not be happier with that. So today I wanted to talk to you, like I say, about the 13 books that I read in the month of June. So let's get started. So the first book that I read um, actually was kind of finishing it in June. I had obviously, I'd started reading it probably six months before um, and I actually listened to this one on audiobook and it was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. This one is obviously the fourth book in the Harry Potter series and I love all of them. Um, I always tend to have an audiobook on the go and I had this, I'd had this one on the go since I lived in the flat so like three, four months now. Um, but I finally finished it in the month of June, right at the very beginning and this is actually my favourite Harry Potter book. There's so much action in this. I love the Triwizard Tournament. I love the Quidditch World Cup. I think the whole thing is really great and there's just so much happening all the time and it doesn't get boring and I absolutely love Stephen Fry um, and his audio um, audiobook of it. Loved it. I think it's great. Like I said, my favourite of the series. Definitely going to reread it in the future like I always do. Um, and yeah, I adore this book. Next up was the book I mentioned in my favourites video and it was a buddy read that I did with the beautiful Charlie from the channel Charlie Brook. And it is 13 by Steve Kavanagh. This is the fourth book I think in the Eddie Flynn series but you don't have to read them in any order because I haven't read the previous three. And honestly this was amazing. It, I, it was my favourite book. Um, of the month until I read one that I read a bit later on in the month which turned out to be my actual favourite book but these two are definitely contenders for the, my favourite books of the year 100% so this basically follows it's a courtroom thriller basically which you all know is my favourite thing um, this follows um, Eddie Flynn who is a defence um, attorney for um, kind of criminals in general or people accused of murders and things and it also jointly um, there are kind of two perspectives and it also follows a man named it also follows a man named Joshua Kane who is a serial killer and basically the premise of this book is that um, Joshua Kane the serial killer is on the jury of a man accused of murdering his wife and his wife's or his like bodyguard I guess because he's a celebrity and it's about the whole thing of that it is a little bit gruesome right at the start there's a particular scene to do with someone's nose uh, which I'm not going to go into any more detail but actually made me feel a bit sick reading it I adored buddy reading this with Charlie it was the first like thriller that we buddy read together we've buddy read a few things now uh, but this was definitely the first thriller and I would love to read more with her because I think it's so interesting to read thrillers with people as well which is always good I did not in any way see what was going to happen in this I thought I had it all sussed out I thought I had it wrapped up in my head and then something completely different happened and I was a bit like what? <laughs> I don't understand where did that come from I loved this it's completely ingenious and I would say if you love thrillers and you haven't read this one 100% read it I now can't wait to read like all of Steve Kavanagh's back catalogue because I adored this one so so much um, it's just so original I've never read anything like this before and it's just there was twists and turns and he thought it all through and yeah 100% the one, like I said one of the best reads of the year for me and actually at the point of reading this it was my favourite book of the year Needless to say, that was five stars. <laughs> I then read a book on my Kindle, which um, a big thank you to NetGalley and Skyhorse Publishing for sending this book to me because um, I was sent this, like I said, free on NetGalley. Um, this one is Escaping the Rabbit Hole, How to Debunk Conspiracy Theories Using Facts, Logic and Respect by Mick West. I gave this book a three star. I thought it was very interesting. It was very well thought out, very well researched. And the execution of it was amazing. It was really well written. The only thing for me, so basically this book is, um, talks about obviously conspiracy theories and there are some main ones that it talks about. It talks about 9-11, it talks about chemtrails, it talks about flat earth. Um, and a few others um, and reading about that was really interesting and I enjoyed those parts. The main thing for me is this book is not a book about debunking conspiracy theories in any way, like really it's not about the conspiracy theories themselves, it's more about how to help a friend of yours who is stuck in a rabbit hole and stuck in that like um, 
conspiracy theory and um, how to get them back out of that I guess. So this felt like a lot of like advice books instead of about the conspiracy theory and I think perhaps I just I didn't fully understand what I was getting into when I read it. However, like I said, I did really enjoy it. The only other thing that I was like a bit it was a bit anno not annoying but a bit frustrating at times was that Mick West is really well known for his website and research on chemtrails which if you didn't know is the conspiracy theory that planes when they go across the sky are uh, letting out like certain uh, chemicals to um, stop global warming and it's about that rather than the fact that the planes are letting out like excess or um, it's the air and I don't know it's really hard to explain I don't I don't profess to be like a conspiracy theory expert in any way um, so yeah it was um, he talks in depth about that. In fact, the chapter on that was one of the longest chapters in the book. The bits that I did enjoy were him talking about certain people who had been stuck in the rabbit hole and had then come out of that and how they came out of it and what sort of led them to it in the first place. I loved reading the personal stories of people. It was more like the in-depth sort of advice bits that I sometimes found a little bit tedious or a little bit annoying but overall it was a really good book and it was definitely a fascinating read so if you know anyone that's stuck in the rabbit hole and you want to give this a read definitely do and if you're just interested in conspiracy theories in general this is a really interesting book it just wasn't what I was hoping for I guess at the time of reading but it was still a three star for sure. Next up I have a book that's been on my shelf for ages and I keep saying I'm going to read it and I was a bit skeptical about it because it has so much like conflicting opinions and this one is Throne of Glass by Sarah Jane Maas. This is a book that like I said everybody on booktube has read or is talking about in some way. Um, either they're talking about how much they love it or how much they hate it. I ended up giving this a five star because I personally really enjoyed it. It basically follows an 18 year old girl named Selena Sardothian who is a trained assassin and she has been in a place named Endovia which is basically some sort of dark mines where um, she's essentially serving a life sentence for what she's done and uh, one day, she, I mean she's treated terribly there and then one day she gets taken out of the mines and taken before the king because she's been asked to represent the prince in a to the death tournament where if she wins she will be the, um, she will be the king's champion and um, essentially her life will be her own again or at least she'll be um, out of the mind, shall we say. This I thought was really well done. To, initially when I first started reading this, because I read about 50 pages and then I didn't read any more for ages, um, but I decided to, in fact I think I reread from the very beginning because like I said I'd read it so long ago. Um, and I think all of the characters in this are amazing. There's so many in-depth like conversations and relationships and it's not just about the romance because I know a lot of people think that Sarah J Maas is just romance and it's not in any way like I think the romance in this is important and um, there is kind of a love triangle in it I suppose but um, I do think it's really interesting. For me uh, what I found really interesting was um, one of the characters in this I've heard has like a book of their own a bit later on I think and a lot of people say how much they hate him or they love him and at the minute I'm like I mean I personally love him so it's going to be interesting to see how he kind of how he gets to the stage where people don't like him I suppose and then they like him again I think. I'm not really sure because like I said I don't I haven't read the others. I am really really excited that I finally read this book. I read The Assassin's Blade which was the like prequel short stories um, and really loved that one maybe like two years ago now and I still hadn't picked this up. I do own the next two books in the series and I'm really excited about that. <laughs> um, so yeah very much looking forward to continuing on with this series but personally this one was a five star for me and I'm very glad that I finally read it. Next up was another buddy read that I read with Lara Maynard, Leo from A Book Life, Julie from Hungry Bookworm and Charlie from Charlie Brook and we all read this one on Twitter and I was very, I had a wonderful time reading this. This is Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier and this was a really really fun book for me to read. I believe this book was written before Rebecca and I read Rebecca earlier on in the year by Daphne du Maurier and it was amazing, it was a five star read for me. I personally gave this one a four star, I didn't love it quite as much as Rebecca but it was still a really fantastic read. This basically follows a girl named Mary Yellen who, um, whose mother dies and so she then decides to go across the country to stay with her aunt, her mother's sister and her aunt's new husband and she gets to a place named Jamaica Inn where none of the locals will go near it, they're too scared and um, she doesn't really understand what she's letting herself in for basically and it's about that. 
Um, I think the characters in this were really well written. Daphne du Maurier has this amazing ability to write scenery and normally in, I find sometimes when books have too much scenery and I feel like I need to skip them because I'm just not interested <laughs> but this was so beautiful I couldn't stop myself from reading it. It was absolutely amazing. It was so in-depth. You really felt like you were in this novel but there's one bit where she's in like a carriage and she's she's driving um, they're driving in this carriage across like um, moors and stuff and oh my god the scenery the way it's described is beautiful I had a wonderful time buddy reading this with the guys like all of them all four of them have made this a wonderful experience and I'm so glad I read it as a buddy read because I think that Daphne du Maurier is one of those people that you feel like you need to talk about the book as you go <laughs> There was a character in this named Jem, who I'm just going to say was a Jem because I absolutely loved him. I thought he was amazing. I was a little bit hooked as soon as he was introduced, to be honest. There wasn't, I didn't even need to know what he was going to do in this book, but I was kind of in love with him already. <laughs> Um, I love this book, I adore my copy, I think it's beautiful and this may be a book that I keep, I haven't fully decided yet, um, I loved it, I think it's got this really gothic twist to it and there is some kind of um, comparisons in this between Jane Eyre and also Wuthering Heights as far as I know, I haven't actually read Wuthering Heights but I kind of got the vibe even though I, cause I knew what the story was about and yeah I definitely think if you read Rebecca and you loved it you'll enjoy this one too and vice versa if you've read this one and you loved it Rebecca is the brilliant next choice um yeah absolutely adored this one definitely a four star from me next up was another buddy read that I did this month I did quite a few um this one is The Colour Purple by Alice Walker which I buddy read with the wonderful Emily from Novel Novels um this was actually our first buddy read ever and we were warned by Charlie going into this that it was very harrowing and there was some pretty big trigger warnings and I will say on the first page there is a trigger warning for rape already. Um, this basically follows a young black girl named Celie who is born into a world where they are kind of poverty stricken and they're very much segregated between the blacks and the whites of the, of the time. I think it's set in, this one is set in the American South and it is um, a really fascinating tale and also completely harrowing and heartbreaking. Um, this um, is about, um, like I said, Celie and her sister Nettie and they are both um, separated uh, in for certain reasons and it's about, it's written in letter form so Celie writes the majority of the first half. Some has just decided to um, mow their lawn. That's really annoying isn't it but I'm gonna have to just keep going I think. Sorry about that if you can hear that in the background. Um, this basically follows a girl named Celie and um, in the first half of the book it's predominantly from her perspective and she writes to God as if it's like a diary or a letter that she writes. But the second half is then split between Celie and Nettie and Nettie, her voice and Celie's were very distinctive, like you could immediately tell who was talking and I think that's always a really wonderful accomplishment if an author can manage to do that. Um, I love this, like I said, this was heartbreaking in so many places, I made me cry so many times and I loved buddy reading this with Emily, I think that we really enjoyed it and I think that we really vibed well for the buddy read so we're actually, on the day I'm filming this, we are in the middle of um, another buddy read and I think that we will continue to buddy read because I think she's amazing anyway and buddy reading with her was just an absolute dream so yes definitely looking forward to um, reading, I don't know, has Alice Walker got many other books? I don't really know. I know that this one is kind of a classic so yeah I'm absolutely, I loved it, I think it was amazing and it apparently won the Pulitzer Prize which I'm not surprised in the slightest about. So this one was a five star from me. Now you may remember in May I took part in the Mental Healthathon run by the beautiful Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books and I didn't actually get round to reading this book. Um, I just completely like I read, I, d I started reading this in May and, um, and then I got into the beginning of June and I was doing buddy reads and completely forgot about it and then I thought I've only got like 150 pages left I need to finish reading it. Then I did and I was not um, disappointed because I gave it a four out of five stars and that is Faceless by Alyssa Scheinmel. I always struggle to say her surname, I really should look up how to say it. This basically follows a girl named Maisie who is burnt in a really bad accident. She is out running one morning and um, there is a thunderstorm and lightning strikes and basically she's in like an electrical fire. 
and in the accident her face is partially destroyed so she has to have a face transplant um, and it's about basically her coming to terms with her new face and what that means in terms of someone had to die for her to have that face and how her identity has now changed and how her mental state has now changed and the people around her and this was a beautiful read I'm really sad I didn't get to finish it for the mental health -a however I actually did really enjoy reading this um, even it doesn't matter when I read it basically I still really enjoyed it I have seen other covers for this but I actually much prefer my cover if I'm honest and this just like breaks my heart this cover because I've now read it and I loved it Maisie is a wonderful character and I think that you see the emotions that she goes through and it's really well written like Alyssa Shymel is so like completely talented um, I gave this a four star just because there were a few bits in this where I thought it was a little bit like convenient um, in terms of um, relationships not to do with anything else um, but I do really really love this book and definitely would recommend it to anybody that um, like needs a bit of kind of mental health books in their life if that makes any sense next up is another net galley book that i received and this is by this is accused the unsolved murder of elizabeth andes by amber hunt and amanda rossman this was a really fascinating book again thank you to net galley and the publisher for sending this to me because i actually really enjoyed this book i remember doing this as part of a try a chapter tag that i did at the beginning of the year and i wasn't like that I wasn't overly excited about it um, but I have now realized that I think it's just because the bit I read was the bit I read wasn't particularly um, like it was kind of the introduction I guess and so it didn't have the kind of um, like moving forward of the story basically so basically this um, is a transcript of a podcast that was done by Amber Hunt and Amanda Rossman Amber Hunt is a journalist and she essentially um, wanted to talk about an unsolved murder. So there was um, a girl named Beth Andes who was found murdered in um, her sort of college dormitories, I guess. Um, she was well, like the flats that she stayed at when she was at um, college. And um, she was found murdered and um, the police didn't know who'd done it. They immediately suspected her boyfriend at the time who was like a football quarterback or a football star basically and they immediately um, arrested him he uh, then went through two different court cases and was found um, not guilty in and was found not guilty in a criminal trial and then later on in a civil trial where Beth's parents sued him uh, for wrongful death and I literally was reading this and I felt like this should 100% be solved like there are so many sort of different leads that were not sort of um, followed up on and it seemed like the police weren't that interested and I loved this I'm it's, it's still not a case that's been solved like that's not a secret it's always in the beginning but I think that with people like this doing this kind of a thing um, they, there is a possibility that like the um, I'll be gone in the dark by Michelle McNamara that this might actually help someone so I would love to um, um, hopefully this gets solved because you know a lot of people's lives have been sort of stolen or ruined over this and obviously Beth's life was stolen and no one has been brought to justice for that so I really enjoyed this I thought the podcast element was interesting obviously it's like I said it's a transcript so this is not a book that was sort of written as a book because I read the sort of arc of this um, there were quite a lot of um, errors in terms of the way that the writing was set out and things but I haven't taken that into account because obviously it is a advanced reader copy and I'm sure that's all been ironed out in the actual copy that's now come out. I did give this a four star because I did obviously it is a little bit repetitive but that is generally because like the podcast there's like an introduction to each section and they have to each sort of podcast episode is like an hour so essentially they're fitting into that they have to kind of recap the previous episodes and stuff so there is a bit of repetition in there um, but I still really enjoyed it and I think that it was really well researched and I love the way that Amber Hunt and Amanda Rossman worked together on it um, yeah I think they got some really good insights and I do hope like I said that eventually this gets solved next up was the first book that I read for the um, Summertime Reads Readathon. This was my choice for the fifth um, prompt, which was was to either read the group read or to buddy read a book. Now, I actually buddy read this particular book with 
Nicole from Beautiful Chaos of Books um, and that was Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This was the final Rainbow Rowell book that I hadn't yet read. Um, I've read all of her YA books and I read her other adult book, this is an adult book, and I read her other one, Landline. I loved all of her YA books and I really did not like Landline and I think it must be a theme because I really did not like this book either. Um, yeah, this one is it's very hard for me to explain and actually Nicole didn't like it either so it really wasn't just me. <laughs> this follows two colleagues named Beth and Jennifer who work at a newspaper office and it's set in 1999. They are emailing back and forth and Lincoln, who is the third person this is about, is a security, like an internet, what do you call it, like a computer security man who essentially gets emails every time an inappropriate email is sent. Now he keeps getting Beth and Jennifer's emails flagging up because they keep talking about all sorts of things and he instead of reporting them or instead of sending them a warning email he decides to just keep reading their emails and then he falls in love with one of them. This book was frustrating to me in a lot of ways. I gave this book a two star. I really really did not like it but to be, to be honest with you majority of this nothing happens. The characters are all really unlikable and on top of that just to make it even worse it's incredibly problematic. There are a lot of, like in the first chapter, they talk about like fetal alcoholism um, from a mother who didn't realise that she was pregnant and drank while she was pregnant. And like, I don't even know how to explain. There were so many things in this. There was lots of comments about um, taking antidepressants. Uh, there was comments about, um, I mean, I don't really want to go into it to be honest with you. This is a book that I found to be very offensive and I personally did not enjoy it. I think there was even a bit in this about how fat girls don't get guys. I mean, whether or not the characters were kind of joking or it was supposed to show, like, it was never called out as an issue and I didn't, like, if it had been solved, I would have been fine. If they'd have called it out and said this, this was a problem, I'd have been fine. They did not. So, yes, it was offensive. Nothing really happened anyway. And then the ending was literally, I closed the last page of this and, I, like, rolled my eyes. That's how bad this was. I, yeah, not a fan. Not a fan at all to be honest and I think maybe I just don't like Rainbow Rowell's adult writing because I feel like because it's adult maybe she feels like she can say these problematic things. I don't know if that's the case at all. I did not like this at all though. Next up we have the book that you all picked for my June TBR. I gave you three options, don't even ask me what they are now because I can't actually remember, in my um, June TBR video and you all decided that the one that I should read is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. So I read this one and so I read this one and you guys did good because I gave this a four star. I thought it was a really lovely story. Um, if I'm honest I didn't fully get into it for the first sort of 50 to 100 pages but when I did Wow. So this follows a boy named Henry Denton who ha has a difficult life. He has a mum who's really struggling to cope. He has a father who left, deserted the family essentially. His older brother has dropped out of college because his girlfriend is pregnant. And his grandmother who lives with them has Alzheimer's. Oh, and his boyfriend committed suicide last year and he's still coming to terms with it all. There's a lot of things for one person to have to deal with. I mean, each one of those things is difficult, but all of them is like, I mean, the poor boy. So essentially, Henry Denton um, has been abducted by aliens since he was 13 years old, and he has been given the chance by, to, the aliens have said to him that he has the chance to stop the world from ending. And he just has to press a button to stop that from happening and um, it's up to him. He has 144 days to make up his mind and he has to work out whether the world is worth saving. And then he meets an artist named Diego Vega who I thought was one of my favourite characters of this whole thing. And Diego has a few kind of secrets or issues in his past himself and Henry kind of, like they start to um, form a friendship I guess you'd say. Um, this book does have a lot of representation in it, so it has um, a gaming character, Henry is gay, and it talks about mental health, uh, obviously as I said Jesse, um, Henry's um, boyfriend, uh, committed suicide, and there were lots and lots of things in this book, and I think the whole thing, I mean there was so many things in this book, that perhaps it was, it was overwhelming, but I did give this a full sub because I thought it was really well written, I thought that the characters were so wonderful, and um, yeah, it was just, there were so many things happening, and I just found myself just 
wanting to keep reading i thought this was a beautiful story definitely worth the read and i'm really glad that you guys picked this for me so thank you very much for that <laughs> Next up was the second book that I read for the Summertime Reads Readathon. This one was for the prompt Summer Romance, I think it was, and it was to read a short and sweet book. So this was a book that was less than 200 pages. I chose um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, which is about 120 pages. And I really don't like this book. I gave this a two star. I did not have a good start to the Summertime Read Reads Readathon because I read two two star books. Um, however, they were both quite short, so I suppose that wasn't too bad. Um, Everyone pretty much probably know the story of Alice in Wonderland, but this basically follows Alice, who is sitting under a tree one day with her older sister and her cat, and she sees a white rabbit run past, and he falls, he goes into a hole, she goes with him, and ends up in Wonderland, and it's about the people that she meets there, and the things that happen, and this is very strange, and I hated it. <laughs> I might, I'm gonna... Hate is a very strong word, but I very much disliked it. This basically, um, I just found all of the characters basically just shouted at Alice all the time. No matter what happened, no matter what she did, they were just having a go at her for no apparent reason. And she was just like, la 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 la, all is good with the world. And I was like, you're really annoying because it's not okay. What is happening? Um, yeah, this is one of the most annoying. And it was so whimsical and so random stuff happening all over the place that I was just... I just wasn't interested I guess so yeah this is not a book that I find myself rereading and it's definitely going to go back to the charity shop I bought it from in the first place and I don't know if I said but that was a two star then we come on to my penultimate book of the month and I read I read this one for again for the summertime reads readathon this was the last book that I read for it um, and this one was for the prompt read a book with yellow on the cover and I gave this a five star because this is my new favorite book of the year so far this is Daisy and Chains by Sharon Bolton. This is a um, this is another kind of courtroom thriller book that I absolutely adore. This obviously is a Sharon Bolton book and I read one of her books last year which was Little Black Lies that I loved and I'm so glad that I found this in the charity shop and decided on a whim to pick it up because it was great. This basically follows a woman named Maggie Rose who is a true crime author and a uh, and a very successful lawyer but she'll only take on the cases of people that she thinks can win. She keeps being contacted by a man named Hamish Wolf, who has been convicted of murdering four um, girls who um, and he's basically in prison um, facing life and he wants to appeal that but he wants uh, Maggie Rose to be his lawyer and she has is wanting to have nothing to do with him basically. And Again, this is a book that I was reading it and I thought, oh, I can see where this is going. And I saw there's there's two twists in this, basically. And the first twist, I feel like it's one of those ones where it's supposed to, it, it kind of leads you on to think that that's the twist in the book. And I was thinking to myself, I know what the twist is. I know what's going to happen. I've got this sussed out. And that is a twist. However, there is another twist, which is even bigger. And I didn't see it. And I was shocked. <laughs> the last 50 pages of this were just like, tumbleweed was going past outside because I wasn't looking anywhere else but this book honestly this was fantastic absolutely phenomenal it's one of my favorite thrillers of all time definitely my favorite book of the year so far and I was kind of annoyed because I finished this book the afternoon where I filmed my favorites video in the morning and I thought to myself really because you know now that I can't put this in my favorite so if you watch my favorites you'll know that actually this one was kind of it was just over 13 by Steve Cavanaugh because I did really love that book too and I'm very happy that I read two courtroom thrillers that I loved this month and it makes me realize just how much I love courtroom thrillers like I said adored this definitely if you love thrillers and you haven't read this yet go ahead and read it because I think you'll love it and then the final thing that I read in the month of June was a graphic novel now I've only read one graphic novel before and that was the V for Vendetta one which I think I gave two stars to because I didn't love it however this one I loved much more this is The Wicked and the Divine the Faust Act which is the first book in it's like the first volume this volume has the first five issues of the Wicked and the Divine series and I know there's lots more volumes of this I do want to continue reading the artwork in this let me see if I can find a good one. The artwork in this is absolutely stunning. Um, I ap oh god, hang on. Like I absolutely loved it, and I love the story in this. There are a few bits where I didn't completely understand, um, but that's just because I've never read a graphic novel before. I think um, this is basically where every ninety years, um, twelve gods return as normal people, and um, in two years later they will be dead, and it's about that now. 
this is kind of the pop stars are gods and gods are pop stars kind of feel i guess i don't think that's what it says on the back here and um, this is a fantasy story definitely this is incredibly adult like i definitely would not read this to young children at all um this has a lot of swearing in it it does also have some quite graphic content and some quite graphic pictures if i'm totally honest i just saw one of them then um i I mean I love this it's incredibly diverse as well there are gay main characters trans main characters um there are just so many characters that I loved adored thought this was great gave it a four star because there was that little bit of it where I was like wait what well, I'm thinking about a gap about that again but I do think that was partially down to the fact that I've not read any graphic novels before I do have another couple on my shelf now so I'm quite interested to read them and see what I'm thinking but I did really really love this one and this was definitely a four star and it was a great last book of the month for me so there you are guys that is the 13 books that I read in the month of June I had a really great reading month and I have some great plans to read more wonderful books in July um, I hope that you're having a great reading month so far let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book of June was because I'm always looking out for recommendations you know I am I also wanted to do my video shout out um, for this this one time is going to Ripley's Reads I absolutely love this channel I think that it's wonderful she has some gorgeous thumbnails her hair is incredible and her content is just amazing I definitely think that you should go and watch her channel she's fantastic and send her some love because she deserves it give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I shall see you in my next video bye guys